So what do the people who believe in works for justification or faith plus works for justification and people who believe that you can lose your salvation uh, due to lack of works or because of bad works and people who believe that you are justified by faith but then sanctified and rewarded uh, sanctified by works what do they have in common well works <laughs> works is what they have in common and god is doing a work to um allow them to be clearly revealed for the root of the issue which is works righteousness uh which means standing for the old creation standing for adam um and not and basically you end up being an enemy of the cross of christ you will not go to the cross you'll bear your cross supposedly but you won't bear the you will not bear your identity as one who's crucified with christ you won't take his cross because that would mean the end of you and your works and your righteousness and your supposed goodness and your love for god and everything that you boast in that has given you uh some kind of identity of feeling spiritual and being approved by men um well they're all coming together uh and this is part of god's work is whenever he sends his servants into the religious environment it is for the purpose of revealing the situation because they are light uh god's people are light and so light always exposes darkness and you know jesus set his face to go to jerusalem knowing that he was going to reveal their hearts um even gabriel said to mary you know your heart's going to be pierced and he's going to be for the uh revealing of many hearts and when he went into Jerusalem during that last week, he turned up the heat. You can see there's an accelerando, there's a crescendo in terms of his uh, verbiage towards the Jewish leaders and the Pharisees and calling them vipers and overthrowing the tables and all the things he did that last week. Uh, really, you see, it just seems like an acceleration and they all thought they were very nice. They all thought that they were very good. They'd clean the outside of the cup and really believe that they had sin under control. But their hearts are fully revealed, I believe, when they're asking for Barabbas. And Pontius Pilate says, you know, well, what about your king? And they say, we have no king but Caesar. That statement, and also let his blood be on our heads. That's Those statements revealed their hearts fully. That everything they pretended to be for was just a sham in that moment because of their murderous hatred for Jesus Christ. Uh, and, you know, none of us thinks that we're enemies of Christ, but the Bible clearly says that we were alienated in our minds through wicked works and that we are children of wrath by nature and that we are enemies of God and that the carnal mind is enmity against God. And unless our mind is renewed and we put on the new man, we are in that old nature that has all of that lurking in it. And, uh, to reject the cross as the means for justification or sanctification is to stand in that old man that hates God, and yet you don't know it because he hasn't been exposed yet. He has not been revealed. 
he's lurking, but you clean the outside of the cup. <clears throat> you don't know you're full of dead men's bones. You don't know you're a brood of vipers. Uh, you're deceived. Well, so that crowd was deceived in that sense. They wanted to be associated with Jesus outwardly in, in some respects, that crowd, uh, when he was doing the miracles and everything. But once he said, you have to eat my blood, eat my flesh and drink my blood to have life, they all departed. They didn't like that. They were offended. And then he was left with his disciples. And that was in that last week as well. I, uh, I believe this is in John, um, which focuses on that last week. Um, I'm very tired. I'm sorry. So, uh, anyway, he was going, he set his face to go into Jerusalem to be a light there, to reveal the darkness in their hearts, to show that their love for the kingdom and their love for God was a sham because they hated the one God sent. And in the end, they were willing to cast off everything that they supposedly held dear to unite in a murderous cause to kill the son of God. Um, and they said, we have no king but Caesar. That just blows me away. When you read that in context and you see that crowd saying that, especially the religious leaders, you're just like, wow, you guys, how could you complete, really do a reversal, 180 degree on everything that you have been standing for and fighting for your whole life? In this moment, how could you do that? What is wrong with you? <laughs> you know, but I'm not saying I would have been any different. I mean, I've always felt like, would I have been one of the disciples that followed him and abandoned him because they all abandoned him in the end? Or would I have been one of the crowd that left after he said, you know, eat my flesh? Or would I have been, you know, one of the Pharisees who was afraid to even associate with him because I didn't want to be rejected by the religious crowd? I don't know, you know. Uh, I don't know that I wouldn't have been there crying out for Barabbas and saying, we don't have any king but Caesar. Well, it's only by the grace of God that I am what I am. And that's why I know that I have to stand in the cross of Christ and nothing else for everything. Righteousness and sanctification and reward. Because I know what's in me. There's nothing good dwelling in my flesh. I had to go to the cross. And that's my liberty from all the potential that's in me. And why, when Christ shines on me, instead of hardening me, it opens me up and makes me happy, you know. Um, but I see the same thing when non osas and non-imputed righteousness and non-sanctification by faith people are all getting together praising each other and saying we need to, to just tolerate and be loving, supposedly, uh, and that we who speak for righteousness and sanctification by faith through the cross, apart from any works, are considered divisive and uh, evil by this group that's coming together. What do they have in common? Works. And what's really amazing to me is to see people saying, I believe in once saved, always saved. I believe in eternal security. I know we have a disagreement on that, but we serve the same God and there's no reason for us to be divided. And you're a beautiful servant of God, even though you don't believe in once saved, always saved. <laughs> I mean, you are throwing away the gospel. You're literally throwing away everything. It's like saying we have no king but Caesar. And I'm seeing it, I've seen it quite a few times now on, on, uh, what it is, is it's people who are angry about sanctification by faith 
and mischaracterizing this teaching. They're hooking up with wolves who vehemently deny once saved, always saved, vehemently deny justification by faith alone apart from works, and flattering them and saying, you know, you're a beautiful servant of the Lord. I know we disagree here, but praise God. Now, what about this David Benjamin guy? I've I, I can show you screenshots that just would blow your mind. Uh, I, I, it blows my mind. If it doesn't blow your mind, then you don't see that OSAS is the gospel. They are absolutely repudiating the gospel when they do that. They're saying, we have no king but Caesar. Uh, their hearts are being revealed. Um, and, you know, I, they don't know what they're capable of. Uh, it's a seared conscience that allows you to do this. And I do believe that we're going to see the people who keep standing and works for sanctification more and more grouped in with, in a false unity, with people who... Uh, think that we could lose our salvation or justification is not by just uh, faith alone. You know, they can sit in the Catholic Church. They might as well just go back to the Catholic Church. And we all came out of the institutional church for a reason. We can't do that. We don't, and we don't want to be in part of that on YouTube either. I don't care if you call me divisive. Uh, it just blows me away. And the light is shining brighter and brighter and brighter on these truths. And there's more of us preaching it there's been quite a few channels raised up even in the last few weeks but this year especially that because now we have we have the vocabulary supplied to us to describe the sense we've had and so people are getting stronger and the light shining brighter and because that light shining the heart and the secret intentions of the heart are being revealed and the tears are being manifested you cannot be a mix of works and faith. You either are all grace or no grace. And it's going to be revealed. There's quite a few people who contended for the kingdom who eventually ended up saying, we have no king but Caesar. And there's quite a few people who've been contending for Osas and saying, Osas is the gospel and blah, 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 and seem to be great contenders for um, the gospel. But when it came to sanctification and rewards, they go to works and flesh and go back uh, from the teaching of Christ being everything and hang on to their flesh and their righteousness and their own sanctification and their pride and their arrogance. So even though they are contending supposedly for OSAS. There's something that just doesn't feel right about it. Well, it's all, it's all going to be revealed. And it ain't going to be pretty for us. You know, it, Jesus went into Jerusalem knowing what was going to happen to him. He set his face, you know. Paul did the same thing in Acts 21. Um, but God is, you know, with us. And no weapon formed against us will prosper. We just need to keep pursuing the truth and he's going to fill us with joy as we focus on him. We don't have to focus on those people. Um, but just don't be surprised. You're going to see people that you are going to be shocked that they're going to basically repudiate everything uh, for kind of a false unity, you know. Um and then they're going to turn and attack uh, people that are labeling as divisive because we're making such a big issue about this. Um, and we're not making an issue to have an argument with them. We're contending for the truth so that people who can hear it, the sheep, can be set free. So, uh, huh. Hope the Lord comes and gets us soon, but meanwhile, it'll be an interesting show to watch, won't it? All right, take care.